There we go. All right, I think I got it. Anyhow, uh, well, we, verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12. That's where we're at, folks. I kind of got ahead of you. But anyhow, uh, Abram is told to go to a land that that he, God will show him. Um, he's, so he's, he says, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and go into a land that I will show thee. And so God don't tell him what that land is. He just said, go. And he said, then, but then he gave him a promise in verse 2. He said, and I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be blessed. All right. Did that happen? Abraham is the name the, he is probably still one of the most recognized people if you want to say that in history um, more people his name is great it's not just great among among Christians though it is great among Christians it's not great just among the Jews even though it is great among the Jews he's also great among the the Arabs uh, now they take a they take a wrong turn a generation or so later but they claim to be Abraham as their father as well. So he's a father of many nations. Uh, and uh, through, his, through his work and through what he did, uh, I think he, blessed, he, he, he reaches out, his influence reaches out to all the world in many respects. And, and we'll see that as we go along. And then verse 3 says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now that's a real, that's a real, uh, a charge from the creator of the universe to one man. And he says that I will, anybody that you, anybody that blesses you, I will bless. Anybody that curses you, I will curse. You know, that takes, that's true today too. It's very well, very, you know, the third right, that's just just one of the the third. Remember what the third right is? Right, it's the the kingdom of that that Hitler would build. It was going to last for a thousand years. And uh, what did he do? He, that he was going to he was going to uh, lock up all the Jews behind the, the barbed wire fences and eventually kill them all. A few years later, what happened to the the third right? It was destroyed. And and what happens? I remember even as a even as a child uh, when I when I was growing up, the, the news when it showed the Berlin. anybody anybody remember the Berlin area besides me? Fred was there at that time. Well, the Berlin Berlin Berlin. I have a hard time saying Berlin area. What it was was uh, the Jew, the Germans, not the Jews. The Germans were wrapped up in the city of Berlin in barbed wire, and they couldn't get out. They were on West Berlin. The ones that, that, uh, that, uh, that the, the allies, American and so forth, were trying to support. But the, German, the, the Russians had them completely surrounded and wrapped in barbed wire. And, and finally, we had to have the air, Berlin airlift in order to get food into those Germans. Uh, and they had pl flying plane after plane, day after day, uh, to get food into the, the Germans that were surrounded, caged up behind barbed wire, just like the Jews were a few years earlier that they had done to the Jews. Same thing happened to them, okay? Every time you see something that, that some nation does bad to the Jews, that thing, that whatever it is, it comes back on. If you bless the Jews or the descendants of Abraham, what happens there? I think it's a blessing. A blessing comes to you. Uh, another good example, I mean, you probably, you know, most of y'all have heard me say this before, but some of you maybe haven't. You remember, how many remember watching the TV and the news when the, when the uh, Gaza Strip was turned over to the Arabs? Remember that? How many of you remember that? You remember and remember what the Jews had to give up their land and give up their homes. And I remember one guy said uh, he had hot houses that he raised tomatoes or something. I don't remember what he raised. 
He had a wonderful business there. He was selling, and he was a Jew, and he was going to he was selling selling this produce wherever it was he wrote uh, raised, and uh, he he said I'm going to just turn this over to them. If they will work it, they can have a good life. Well, when they turned it over to the Arabs, that the Palestinians supposedly, they went in there and tore the place up. They said, we don't want nothing to do with anything the Jews have built. Uh, anyhow, the, uh, they had to tear their houses down, everything they done. You remember what happened a week later? After the Jews were thrown out of God, the, the Jews were thrown out of the Gaza Strip and it was turned over to the Arabs. How many remember what happened one week later? You know, we had America had a lot to do with forcing that. You know that, don't you? In fact, we, we pretty well pressured Israel into giving up the Gaza Strip to the Arabs, thinking that that was going to bring peace. You see how much peace they got for it, don't you? That was supposedly giving up land for peace. You can't give up something tangible for something intangible. It don't work that way. But anyhow, that's what we were doing, trying to force. Well, a week later, what happened? was a little little storm called Katrina. Remember that? And we've seen this we've seen Americans doing having to do the same thing that we forced the Arab the Jews to do in in the in the Gaza Strip. We forced them to leave their land and their houses and to flee. To leave. And we had hundreds and thousands of people. I remember I remember the stadium down there in New Orleans was was a, a place where they was able to gather somewhat. And a mess got up and went anyhow in, in there as well. Uh, so that happened one week. And uh, uh, the same thing was true. Uh, I can't remember the, I can't, I can't remember what the storm that they called it. The Great Northeaster, they called it. it that uh, uh, after Bush had tried to, our President Bush had tried to get the, the Arabs, um, the Jews to, Settled land and settled settled is. He's putting pressure on them. That great northeaster come in and hit Bush's uh, home in uh, Kenny Buckboard, I think is what it is, or whatever they call it. Just a few days later, it's, it goes on and on. Uh, in fact, right right before that, uh, he was going to announce. Uh, I think, as well as I remember, Bush was going to announce that he was going to want going to tell encourage the Jews to return to their 67 borders, and but he never did do it because his, his home and everything up, up there got uh, destroyed by that great Northeaster that came up on. Over and over again, you can look back at history of what, what people did to the Jews come back on them. And the blessings that you give to the Jews also comes back on you. That's one of the reasons why America has been blessed through these past uh, thousand Oh, not thousand. We've been here that these past three or four hundred years is because we blessed Israel, uh, and I, I, and 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 uh, if it will it will not be good for America. Of course, we already are somewhat turning our back on Israel, and it will not be good for America when we completely turn our back. By the way, it will happen someday. It's going to be a, it's going to come to a point that there's going to be no nation that supports Israel, they're gonna be left alone. Uh, and that's gonna be in the Lord's will because because what it's gonna do, I think it, very, it may be after the rapture, after we're gone, I don't know. But it, the whole the whole point is to give get them to to look to him to be to deliver them, rather than looking to the United States to deliver them. Because right now, we they look to us. Well, that ain't gonna last forever. They're gonna to have to do someday to look to uh, to look to the, to, their, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, for deliverance. Uh, this brings back, I'll tell you, this, I think I've told you this before, this brings back memories uh, when I talk about this, about when I was young, and I'm, when I say young, I mean real young, first, first grade in, high, in school, not first grade in high school, first grade in school. Uh, and, you know, back in, that, back in them days, you had the first 30 minutes was reading by, the Bible. We'd read, we started at Genesis. You remember that, Susan, don't you? Yeah. I remember sitting in Miss White. That was our teacher. And, and uh, 
she would uh, she would read. I think she was reading, and maybe, I think it went on in maybe in the second, third grade too. But but I remember I remember reading it, and and when I couldn't understand these Jews had all these miracles happen to them. The Red Sea parted, and the, all these different things and miracles that took place to deliver them. I said, I said, wonder what I, I was thinking to myself. Okay, I was like, whatever happened to them? If God was God was blessing them, if God was doing all this in, why are they not doing it now? Uh, I mean, that's just the thoughts of, of a six-year-old that I couldn't understand it. If it's all if this is a Bible and this is real, why is it not happening today? That was my thought process. And the thing about it is, God still is doing it. We just don't realize it. He's still blessing the Israel. He's still using them and preparing them and put them in place. He's restored their nation. He's restored their people. He's restored their land. And and he's continued to bless them. Now, has they always been that? There was a period of time that they were a curse. Uh, that time of being from around uh, 500 B.C., whenever, whenever Babylon took them captive. From that time on until today, uh, un until 1948, uh, they were accursed. They were um, they had no land, they had no home, and yet they miraculously God restored not only their land, He gave them their land back, even give them their language back. Because up until up until up until then, the Jews didn't speak; they spoke whatever the language was of their native native language. In German, they speak German. I want, you've heard of Yiddish? Maybe you've heard of Yiddish. It's kind of a mixture of of different languages that they would speak. Uh, but God gave them back the, the through a man called, I uh, can't, can't remember his name right now, but he started even in the 1800s, or late 1800s, to start to teaching his children to speak Hebrew, te teaching and then in going to schools and, and encouraging them to, that'd be Jewish schools, to teach their kids Hebrew the only place that Hebrew was spoken then was in the synagogues during worship service. But 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 he, he started the process. He even created the dictionary that had the modern words uh, that uh, that maybe didn't uh, exist back at the time of the old Hebrew and created the new created new words uh, for ambulance not well it wouldn't ambulance then but in eighteen hundreds but but uh, whatever the words were in the 1800s that didn't match, that didn't exist back in uh, 500 B.C. Uh, he started he started uh, doing that. He, and finally, he got the, the language, uh, through his work, the language of, uh, of Hebrew was restored and brought back to life. And today, that's what they speak in Israel. If, you go, if, you, if you're a Jew and you create, you go Aliyah, you go, Aliyah means going up. Uh, they go back to going up to Israel, going up to Jerusalem. That's, that if you if you are Aliyah, the first thing you do is take a, a lesson. If you don't know how to speak Hebrew, you take you start taking Hebrew lessons. Government provides it that you learn how to speak Hebrew, and uh, and and so that you can exist and work in land. And of course, you'd have to learn pretty quick if you want to get around or get anywhere. You have to learn it pretty quick. But anyhow, that's what. Uh, uh, that's just a little bit of what it means to uh, uh, to bless Israel or to curse Israel. Uh, Israel is the only nation in the world that has ever really been restored from a, brought back to life, been restored, raised up again. I think it's a picture of, of in some respects, it's a picture of Jesus uh, that he that the nation is raised up. Well, Jesus, as Jesus was raised up, been brought back to life. Is that in the in the book of Ezekiel, the Valley of the Dry Bones, we won't go we won't go there and read it, but but it start it says that Ezekiel seen the seen the Valley of Dry Bones, and he said, well, "Who are these? Who? What are these dry bones?" And God said, "Speak to the bones," and and he spoke to them, and they begin to rattle. Scripture says, and then the bones come together, and then and then the, the then the flesh begins to appear on the bones. And then the, finally, the, the, all the organs and the, everything is back on the bones. And then finally, the skin comes back on the bones, the sinews, all that is there. 
but there's no life in them. And then, God, and then the scripture says God breathed into them and they become alive again. That's what's been going on since 1948. The, the bones have started to rattle. Uh, the, the flesh has come back on the bones. Uh, the skin is there. And I personally believe God is beginning to, begin, beginning to uh, speak, the, uh, breathe the, the, the spirit into them. I was, I was just hearing this past week that uh, a, a revival almost is, is, uh, is, is occurring through a lot of the Jews in Israel and around the world, but especially in Israel. Uh, not only in the Jews, but also the Arabs as well. Many Arabs are coming to Jesus because they see a vision or they see a, a, something miraculous happens to them that they, they accept Jesus. But anyhow, uh, I believe that that's what's taking place. But anyhow, what Abraham say, or God says to Abraham, he will bless them that bless you. If you curse them, they will curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And uh, that is definitely true physically, if not spiritually. I believe spirit both. But physically, you know where a lot of the, uh, a lot of our medicines come from today comes from Israel. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, uh, technology that we have today uh, originates, a lot of it originates in Israel. Um, uh, if you look at, if you look at, uh, you heard of this, what was it? Uh, what's that award they give to scientists and all that? I can't remember what they call it. Um, they give it to Barack Obama, though, he, right after he was elected for whatever Nobel reason. Prize. What was that? Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize, yeah. But, they, but a lot of the, no, not just a lot, a majority of the Nobel Prizes for medicine and for, for technology and so forth are, uh, a vast majority of them are, were won by Jews, uh, that they hold the vast majority of the technology that we receive today. The world is being blessed through the through the through them, and uh, uh, but anyhow, there's some there's those that want to, to curse them, and when that happens, just watch that watch what happens to them. Uh, now we'll talk a minute about I'll kind of throw this in as a side note. Um, you know that war that will that's being fought today over in uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, by by Putin and Russia, and by the way, that's because of our inflation. Y'all knew that, didn't you? <laughs> but anyhow, I won't go any further than that. <laughs> I won't go any further than that. At least I still can ride a bicycle. I but shouldn't say that. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Uh, most of y'all know that Biden fell off of his bicycle yesterday. Did you know that? Y'all know that. Fell off of his bicycle. Anyhow, I won't get any further than that. But what I, what I am talking about, though, is that uh, uh, that what's taking place in the world today uh, is is in God's plan. He's planned it that way. He's planning it that way. It's it's coming about. Uh, no other nation has ever been born, reborn. Uh, have have the Hittites? Is there any chance that the Hittites? Will ever be reborn again? You ever heard of the Hittite nation being reborn? You can't imagine it. Uh, it just don't happen. But yet the nation, the Babylonians, of course, that, now that's another story. Uh, that, I think that they're, well, they are some of the teachings and some of the beliefs of Babylon are very much alive in the world today, but I won't get into that. But anyhow, the point I'm trying to make is that if you want, if, and this don't happen just as a, just just in a in a national position, but this occurs in a personal position. If you if you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you help Israel, you will be you will be blessed. That's what this is talking about. So Abraham departed, as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. He's older than I. He, when he left, he was older than I am now, and older than most of most of most of us, and yet and yet maybe all of us. I don't know, but uh, but you can imagine that he was he was seventy five years old 
and, and all of a sudden God tells you to pack up your belongings and go to a land I'm going to show to you. And, and we, you, you see also a little later on in the scripture that God has told him, and I will take you or, or I will lead you to a city or Abraham, Abram was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. That's the city that Abram, Abram was looking for. It's not in this particular verse, but we'll see it later on, that he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. And so Abraham, Abram departed. I keep wanting to call him Abraham. He will be named that, and we'll talk about that when we get there. As the Lord had spoken unto him. In other words, he did what the Lord said. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do. The Lord lays us something on our heart, and I'm not telling you that he's going to lay on your heart to go to the darkest nation in Africa or something like that. He might, but I doubt it. But he's going he's to lay on our heart something to do today. He will do that. Something to do today. Uh, God's leadership by the Spirit is not like a spotlight or a flashlight. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a lantern. You remember when Daddy would go milk the cows, he would light a lantern. Uh, he would just hold the lantern out, and you'd see a, a foot or two in front of uh, in front of you. Uh, you couldn't see way out what's going on down at the barn. You'd just see what's going on right in front of you. You wouldn't step on a snake or something. Uh, that's the way God works. He just it's kind of like a light that shines around you, and you, he, he wants you to trust Him one step at a time, one step at a time. He never tells you where you're going. He never says, there's where you're going way out there a mile away. He never says that. It's always one step at a time. And that's, why, that's what he's telling us. I think that's the way he's leading Abram. He's saying, he's saying go to this, go to this, uh, follow me, and I will show you where to go. So, and says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot with him. I would keep, keep Lot in your mind. Lot, remember, uh, um, I think Abram's brother had died or young I think we talked about that last week but it, that uh, but that was his son Lot so it's Lot Lot's Abram, Abram's nephew and it says so Abram was 75 years old and he departed out of Haran <clears throat> now Abraham took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went for to go to the land of Canaan, and unto the land of Canaan they came, and so, so the Lord leads him to the land of Canaan. Now, like I said, I believe Abram's father was supposed to go there, and I think he stopped there at Haran or wherever there's at. And but Abr Abram goes on. And I think he takes him goes on to this land, and uh, notice he says he took Sarah. Sarah his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the substance they had gathered, all everything that they owned, they, they pulled up stakes, and the souls that they had gotten. I think you, you might wonder, what's the souls? I think that's his servants, uh, people that uh, helped him tend his, his flocks and herds, slaves, if you will, but uh, I don't know that they call them slaves. I think it's more like employees. I mean, he, not like it's not really like employees here. They couldn't quit, but to be honest with you, they probably wouldn't want to quit. They probably enjoyed the life that they had with Abram, uh, tending his flocks, and it was a way of life for them. And so the, the souls that he had uh, that came to him to Canaan, and it says, and Abram passed through the land into the place of Shechem, uh, and unto the plain of Moral. And the Canaanites were then in the land. The Canaanites were there. So, so a, you'll find out as we go along that there's a lot of other people in this land. And <clears throat> well, we'll see more about that when we get when we get later on about uh, the people that were there. Uh, they, they're <coughs> the Lord had was leaving them there for a, for a certain reason. And, and I believe it had something to do with, with what was going on back before the flood as well, uh, the Canaanites and some of the other nations. Uh, the reason I say that is because when we look at about in the book of Joshua, uh, when, when, uh, when Joshua destroys them 
Sometimes he tells them to kill everything. We've talked about that before. Tells them to kill men, women, children, animals even. Uh, sometimes he didn't. Sometimes he did. And I think that's what dealing with the Canaanites and some of the people that were in the land at that time. But anyhow, he, first the place he come to is Shechem. Shechem you hear a lot of about in, in the Bible. I think uh, uh, there were several times that, uh, that altars were built there. Shechem, if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong about this, but Shechem is a modern day Hebron. Have you heard, have you heard the word of Hebron you know, on the news? Well, Hebron is a, is a city where Abram is buried and Sarah, uh, Sarah later on, but Sarah was buried. And there's, uh, their, 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 their um, uh, tombs are still there. And there's a kind of a, the Jews, uh, the Jews have respected. It's kind of a city that's mixed. They got Jews there and they got Arabs there. It's always trouble going on. A lot of times you'll see rocks being thrown at the Jews and so forth in, in Hebron. Uh, there's always kind of a conflict there. Uh, one time the Arabs took the total control of the, uh, of the tombs where uh, the, the Jews had, uh, had uh, built over the areas where, where Abram was supposedly was buried, etc., and they painted it green. And that's, that's the color of the, uh, you'll notice in, uh, in uh, anything that's got anything to do with, with the Arabs, they usually paint it green. Uh, if you see, if you see, uh, if you happen to go to Israel, a lot of the there's fences around the, the uh, 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 Temple Mount, wrought iron fences and so forth. They'll be painted green. Anywhere you see green. Now the Jews, on the other hand, they'll if they paint anything, it'll probably be blue, uh, the uh, color of their flag. But the Arabs, if you notice, in a lot of their their flags have green. That, I'm, uh, I'm going to chase a rabbit here for just a minute though, on that because when you look at the four horsemen of the apocalypse, one was, <coughs> one was white, one was black, one was red, and it says one was, was uh, pale. It really means that they were, it really means it was green. The color green that you get when, when you, if you was a child and you were caught chewing tobacco and you turn green. <laughs> That's the color green it is. That's what they mean by, that's what they mean by uh, uh, when they say that it's pale, yeah. But it really means, if you look at the real interpretation, it's green. I like, I like, like kind of like your shirt there. Kind of like, I'm not, not throwing off on it, but that's the kind of green it was. It was a light color, it's a light color green is the indication. And, uh, or maybe it's about the color of my shirt as well, huh? Maybe kind of like Dale's shirt there. But anyhow, uh, I, that's kind of a side note, but anything you see Arab or is, is usually painted green. Anyhow, and, Arab, and Abram passed through the land and to the place of Shechem. But Shechem is, is today is Hebron. And, and my, as well as I remember, I might be wrong, but I think that's right. And the Canaanites that live there. They also, I'll tell you this archeologically speaking, they have found and it's, in, it's near Shechem, as well as I remember, near Hebron. Uh, the Jews have found the first altar uh, that, uh, that uh, Joshua built after he crossed the Jordan and come into, into Israel. Uh, they have found that, that first, very first altar that he built to the Lord. Uh, and uh, in fact, I think they're taking trips there. The only problem is it's a little bit of a uh, Arab area. And so some of the guides are not, are not taking people there, but uh, some of them some of them are. But that'd be interesting to see the very first altar that that uh, that uh, was built by Joshua after he entered it entered across the Jordan River uh, into Jeru into Israel. But anyhow, uh, it says and the builder on the altar of the Lord. It says here in it says. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto, Thy seed will I give the land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So you see, uh, Abram built an altar here too. And it's very similar, probably very close to the same place that, that, uh, that uh, uh, 
Joshua built, but because it's all coming to that same area of Shechem or Hebron in that area of Israel. But he sat anyhow, verse 7 says, The Lord appeared unto Abram there and said unto thy seed. Notice it's not plural. It's always, seed is almost always singular in the, in the scripture. I will, and to thy seed will I give this land. And there and there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Uh, the reason I mention the seed is always, uh, just about always, I don't know if there's any place where it's plural, it might be, but it talks about thy seed. I know, he's, I know generally he's speaking about his descendants. I understand that because that's what it is. It's talking about his descendants. But also, I think, more importantly, the reason is singular because he's talking about the seed that God said, would, excuse me, would bruise Satan's, Satan's head. We know who that seed is. That was it. That was Jesus when he, when he uh, conquered uh, death and hell, uh, and and, uh, and and delivered us, give us the opportunity. That's thus he will give to that thy seed. Well, that's if that's the case, and it means that that land will be given to Jesus, and I, that, that is true because because that uh, <laughs> Jesus give uh, God gives Jesus the land. Uh, and he rules over it for a thousand years uh, during that during the millennial. He rules over it now, for, by the way, but but li literally at that time. And he says, and he removed from thence unto the to, to a mountain in the east of Bethel. Beth means house, and El means God. Bethel means house of God, uh, and uh, it's also. Uh, Beth, you, you'll see that word quite a bit. You read, where else you see Beth in, in the Bible? Beth, Lehem. You know what that means? Lehem is bread. It means house of bread. Jesus was born in the house of bread. Bet Lehem. And, uh, and so a lot of times you'll see that word. And it, it always, it's also the second letter in the Hebrew al alphabet, Bet. And if you look at the way they draw it, it looks like a little a little house. It's got a flat top and two legs. It's kind of like a door or a house. And so, but anyhow, it says the mountain east of Bethlehem, house of God, and 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 pitched his tent, having uh, Bethel, Bethel Bethel on the west and Ha on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord again. So he's built a second altar in Bethel. And uh, Bethel also was became a place, if I'm not mistaken, we will see that if we get in, if we do Exodus sometime, uh, that that's where, uh, uh, that's where uh, uh, the altar, uh, not the altar, but the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant was kept and they worshiped in the, the tabernacle in Israel until until uh, uh, David and not David, but his son Solomon built the temple. Until then, it was kept in in uh, in uh, uh, Bethel, the house of God. And some uh, <clears throat> some people some people believe that that I, and I tend to agree with it that someday the the the, the uh, tabernacle will be found. Um, that it, 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 where did it go? Something happened to the tabernacle, and I believe it will be found someday. I'm, that's my opinion, uh, but that's, but I do believe that. But anyhow, it says, and Hea on the east, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. So he built an altar in Shechem, and he built an altar in Bethel. Uh, and it says, Abraham journeyed going on still toward the south. So he's going, basically he's going from north up into Galilee and the Sea of Galilee in that area, and he's going south. And he's probably at Shechem, but would be uh, uh, at the southern tip end of, of the Sea of Galilee. And he goes on down to Bethel, which is getting closer down to where Jerusalem is at. And Abram journeyed going on toward the south, and there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt and sojourned there. For the famine was grievous in the land. So Abraham kept going. Now, 
Uh, I don't can't really answer that. Maybe why, but maybe maybe we'll see that in a minute. But he kept going all all the way down to into, into Egypt, and it came to pass when he come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now I know that thou art fair woman to look upon. She was probably 65 years old at this time. If he was 75, she was 65, because so she's 10 years younger than him, as well as I remember. So, and it says that she's still fair to look upon. So she obviously still looked good. Uh, it could be that still we're still, still seeing some of this uh, transition that's taking place between the generations uh, because of, uh, or the lifespan, I, I guess you could say, as it's getting shorter and shorter. At 75, when you were living up to be a six, 965 years, 75 was probably young whippersnapper. You know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, but maybe now uh, it's, it's, it, it, that, that effect is still in place, but not, maybe not as much as it was. But I, I'm just guessing there, okay? But it says, and it came to pass when he come near, he went to Egypt and he told her, in other words, he's telling, he's telling Sarah, you, you're fair to look upon. Now, what's, what's the point of this? All right, look at verse 12. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. And he's wondering, he's wondering, why, well, why would they kill him? They kill him to get her. I guess that's what he's thinking. Uh, they won't have access to her, but if he's, she's married, uh, then then they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to maybe go out with her or whatever they did at the, in Egypt in the olden days. But anyhow, uh, he says that uh, he, that his wife and that they will kill me. He was worried about that. Uh, this is one of the mistakes that Abram made. Abram was not a perfect man, and he says, "Say I pray thee, thou art my sister." that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. In other words, he's saying, all right, you tell them you're my sister. And she was. You're kind of not lying. She was his half-sister, uh, as well as I remember. And so she, uh, he tells her, you tell them you're my sister, and they will treat me good because they will want to impress me because you know, they might think that maybe they can get hooked up with Sarah here somehow, though. You understand what I'm saying? Did, did I not? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I thought, okay. <laughs> it's, 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 huh? Like yeah, kind of like a soap opera. opera. That's right. Okay. Uh, but, but what was that? A little white lie. A little white lie. Yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of a truth and kind of a lie. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's kind of like a well, I won't go into that. Uh, but say, say, I pray thee that you're my sister, okay? And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Well, she must have been a knockout, I tell you, for 75. Uh, and the princes also of the Pharaoh saw her and commented her before the Pharaoh. And the woman, and the, the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. I tell you what. Too bad they didn't have cameras back in that day. I'd like to see what she looked like. But anyhow. She had enough faith huh? to get up and talk about the woman. The Lord told you to, but didn't have enough faith for the Lord to take care of you. Yeah. They're trying to. Like I said, Abram, Abram wasn't perfect. They, they, uh, they got caught up in the ways of the world from time to time, too. Roger. Oh, it is, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll stop there at the middle of that soap opera. <laughs> kind of like a soap opera. We'll pick it up next week. Oh, Let's say we'll pick it up. At, we'll pick it up at verse fourteen. How's that sound? Let me get this thing here to do. There you go. Twelve fourteen. Let's all stand. We'll pray and be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, again, we praise you, and we just thank you for allowing us to be here together. Be with all those on our prayer list. Be with Matt as he brings the message, and we'll just praise you, Father, for it. And I pray a blessing over everyone here now.
Ve'asim l'cha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to have you all today. I hated to break in the middle of the soap opera. Yeah, well, <laughs> well that's good. That keep people, they won't come back to see the results. <laughs> Good to have you today. <laughs>